Hello, welcome to this video looking at limits at infinity. And also, we'll be finding horizontal asymptotes. My name is Nikai Rimmer. Thank you for thank you for watching. Let's go ahead and get started. What does it mean to take the limit at infinity? Is that really a thing? You can you really be at infinity? So, technically no. All right. So we're going to be instead calling it the limit as x approaches infinity. We've seen limits as x approach a number. Now we're going to do limits as x approaches infinity. If it happens to be that that is some finite number L, then what we say then is that the line y equals L is a horizontal asymptote of that function. Okay. And nothing special about infinity. We could have limit as x goes to negative infinity equal to some finite constant. Still, the line y equals that finite constant is a horizontal asymptote of your function. Some functions have multiple horizontal asymptotes, the most famous of which would be y equals the arctan of x. As x approaches infinity, the arctan will approach pi over 2. As x approaches negative infinity, the arctan function will approach negative pi over 2. Remember, it's the inverse of tan. And so um, it switches the inputs and output values for, for y equals the tan of x. And so as x approaches pi over 2, you shoot off to infinity. As x approaches negative pi over 2, you shoot off to negative infinity, flip-flop those and uh, input and output, and you end up with this result. Okay, it's an important graph. It's one that you should know, have it on your list of graphs that you should know, mainly for this one reason. <laughs> All right, great. So here's just some cooked up drawing here. Uh, if it seems that the graph is going off the grid here, consider it uh, to continue to go that way. So consider um, little arrows um, indicating that it's going to continue in that manner. All right. So first up, what's the limit as x goes to infinity of this function? Well, we only have this grid here, but we're to assume that it continues off to the right there. And each little um, grid point is a one, a one by, these are one by one grids. So um, that's going to be two. What about towards minus infinity? So it's off to the left. It's going to be also 2, or oh, negative 2, sorry. All right, what about as x goes to 3? We've done these before. Limits as x go to a number. When it's no indication of left or right, we have to assume then that it's from both sides. We have to see if they agree. So as we go towards 3 from the right, what we have is that the function is headed off to infinity continues up in that direction as we go towards three from the left we have that the function is headed to also infinity they agree so there's a difference between a limit being infinite and a limit as x goes to infinity you gotta make sure you keep those straight all right great how about the limit as x goes to zero we have the opposite effect happening they both are diving down to minus infinity Okay, let's look at the limit as x goes to negative 2 from the right-hand side. So here we are approaching negative 2, and this function is diving down to, continue down that way, negative infinity. Okay, now when you have the limit being equal to a constant when you're going towards infinity or minus, minus infinity, that is a horizontal asymptote. So y equals 2, as we saw in the last slide. Here we have y equals negative 2. Uh, when you have your limit being infinite, that's what, that's what leads to a vertical asymptote. That line, uh, it should be drawn in. Let me go ahead and draw it in. The line should be uh, a vertical line drawn when you have the limit go off to infinity. Both of them are green, uh, both of them going off to negative infinity in green, or just one of them going off to infinity, left or right. So x equals 3 is where that happened at. So we can put in here then a, uh, let's draw it in green, uh, a dashed line to indicate the fact that we have a vertical asymptote. Um, and then also it happens again, where else at? We saw at zero, so at, at the y-axis that happened. So that's another vertical asymptote. 
and then finally uh, it happens again when we had the right uh, the right hand limit at negative two. It's a vertical asymptote. It's going to dive down to minus infinity there. X equals negative two. Okay, so you can find horizontal asymptotes and you can find vertical asymptotes now based off of finding limits. Now, in the previous section, we looked at the introduction to limits and we had all these limit laws. The limit of a sum is the sum of the limits, provided that they both exist and are finite. Uh, the limit of a difference is the difference of the limits. The limit of a product is the product of the limits. The limit of a, of a quotient is the quotient of the limits, provided that the um, the limit of the function that's in the denominator is not zero. Okay, limit of a constant times a function is a constant times the limit of that function. The limit of a constant is that constant. The limit of x as x goes to a is just um, going to be a. All these hold as x goes to a. We checked that already. Um, even this uh, composite limit here, um, with if you bring the if you have a function that's raised to a power, you can bring the limit inside take that limit and then raise the result to that power. All right, great. Well, if these limits hold from before, they should also hold for infinity. As long as, you know, um, as you go towards infinity, we're talking about not the, not the result being infinity. We're talking about as you go towards infinity, if, if, if uh, replace all the A's with infinity. And what I'm saying here is that all these limit laws still hold, okay? All right, great. Now we want to consider the function one over x. We know what happens at zero. We'd studied it. We know that as you approach zero from the right hand side, you're going to go off to infinity. As you approach zero from the left hand side, you're going to go down to negative infinity. All right, great. What about as this function approaches infinity or as approaches negative infinity? So what is the limit as x goes to infinity of one over x? This is going to be a very important limit to us in the next uh, video. So we want to make sure we understand this one. And it doesn't have to be just a one. It could be any constant in the numerator. So x is headed towards infinity. You cannot plug in infinity, okay? But you can conceive of a very large number. I like to plug in a billion. A billion is a one followed by nine zeros. So I'm thinking of this. You can't really plug it in, but you're thinking of infinity. And so that's going to be a really small number. <laughs> one divided by a billion. One cut into a billion pieces. And so, yes, zero. You asymptotically approach zero. Y equals zero is an asymptote of this function. Anything different happening at negative infinity? What about if you put a negative a billion in? Still the same. It's going to go to zero. Um, why do we care so much about this? Well, in the in the next video, we're going to look at rational functions where we have a polynomial divided by another polynomial. And we're going to do some algebra to attack that. And the algebra will result in having limits as x goes to infinity of a constant over x or maybe even a constant over x to a power. Like, you know, if this billion was squared, the result wouldn't change. If the billion was even underneath a square root, the result wouldn't change. If you have any rational number for your root, the result doesn't change. A billion raised to that um, positive, of course, <laughs> rational number should still end up having a limit go to zero, any constant up top as well. You gotta be careful with um, towards negative infinity though, because you know if the rational root is a half, it doesn't even evaluate. There's no, there's no chance of plugging in um, a negative number to a square root. So as long as, you know, that, you know, the function is defined. So we got to avoid, you know, those even roots, the fourth and half and so on, so that uh, we could still say that, yes, this limit as you go towards negative infinity is also zero. Okay. As long as you avoid, you know, places where the, you know, function, you know, as you go off to the left, you need something there. You need to make sure that the function is defined there. All right. Great. Let's go ahead and end this video so it doesn't get too long. Uh, in the next video, we, we look at rational functions and we do the algebra to solve them, but we get shortcuts in, in um, there's going to be three different cases based on the degree of the numerator versus the degree of the denominator. And they'll, they'll be in two of those cases, we'll be able to use a shortcut. All right. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. Um, please uh, comment down below. If you have any questions, please uh, reach out to me, uh, like and subscribe. 
I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.